All right, after so much effort to try to get on the shear, you know, let's hope everything's gonna go smooth. Um, let's go into the psukim directly. Okay, the parsha starts in a very interesting way. Sabe Saharoin, Vazban of Lamar. Every word has books to be written about. That's the only time you're going to see Aaron anymore in the Avoida. Every time it's going to be only his children. Daber Abne Aaron. Daber Abne Aaron. Sabes ben Aaron, but never Aaron. Aaron, that's the only time you're going to see him. All this because of the ego. Because he did the ego, so he didn't have the, the merit. The Midrash comes and say uh, that Moshe Rabbeinu Davin, the Kodesh Baruch who gives him the the, the COVID, you know, to uh, to address him before the beginning of the Avoida in the Mishkan, you know, and Akadosh Baruch Hu answered his tefillah. That's why you see Aaron here. But here we start now. The, the, this is the Torah, meaning the dinim of the oil. I like it. The only thing is, the Torah, we learned it in Vaikra, not here. Here, it's going to give us only one mitzvah. The mitzvah of Trumas Adeshen, of removing the ashes in the morning, prior to using the Mizbeach again for the new day, bringing the new Korbanis, we had to remove the ashes. That's the only mitzvah. And all the other mitzvahs, if you want to know anything about the Oila, that we learned in uh, Parshas Vayikra. So why do you say this in the wrong place? Because anything pertaining per se to the Oila, was learned in Pasha's Vayikra. Here we're learning something about the Mizbeach, which is not really the Oilo. So why do you start Zois Teiras Ha Oilo? Not only this, you're going to say He Ha Oilo. Yeah, I know. I didn't understand when you said the first time Ha Oilo. You have to repeat me a second time He Ha Oilo. She is the Oilo. That was uh, burning on the Mizbeach the whole entire night. Truly, here he talks about carbon atomic. Because that was the last carbon that was offered on the Mizbeach. The first carbon that was offered was carbon atamid of the morning. So it was the oil that was burnt on the Mizbeach to start the day. And one after every carbon was finished in the Beis Amikdash, they used to bring another carbon atamid of the afternoon. And it was burning and was remaining there the whole night on the Mizbeach. So... And what do you have to do? The Eisham is Beach to Kadbul. And the, 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 the fire of the Mizbeach will burn it. Do you understand? Do you do you hear this lotion what I'm translating right now here? It, it says already, Al Moito Al Hamizbeach. He had to say Moikda Al Hamizbeach. Al Moikda, don't know what it means. Ala mizbeach on the mizbeach. Okay. And then what he means, the esh ha mizbeach to kadboy. And the, on the fire of, mizbe, of the mizbeach has to burn it. Which are the fire? It's on the mizbeach. You told me already to burn it on the mizbeach. So how can you have, a, 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 how can there be a possibility of having a different, a different esh? It's not shayach. Not only this, 
it's going to be repeated non-stop. Uh, you see, like, you follow the cursor. One, two, three, four passes. And the ace of the Mizbeach should always be burning, never be turned off. And uh, and that's not it. Uh, there's another one. We understand. We understand that there's something with a fire here. And we have to understand what it is. Because a lot of details have been given in this puzzle. Because I can start taking away right now. Are you telling me that the halachas of Eula, we learned them in, in, in Vayikra. However, the, 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 the kapara of the Eula, how it works, we learn it here. Is that the intention of the apostle? Maybe. We'll see. This is where I'm going to focus. On the true mesadation, velova shakoyhen midovad umichnese badil bashar besaroi. The Kohen has to wear clothes of linen and a pants of linen. So midoibad means uh, um, a shirt, but fitted, fitted shirt of linen, michnesebad, and a pants of linen. Yilbashal besaro, he cannot have nothing between his skin and those, you know, the shirt and this um, and these pants. The harem as hadeshan, and then the mitzvah is to remove. We're we talking about ashes. Why do you invent me a new word, deshen? We know what afer is. We know this is ashes, but you come up with a new word. It has to be the harem as hadeshan. It has to the harem. What do you mean elevate? Harem is loshan truma. Truma sadeshen. Which truma? Truma, every time you make a truma, you bring an you bring dusha. Like, like someone finished uh, harvesting his field, you know, threshed it, everything, brought it to his house. He's hived the masters. As soon as he picks up the first batch for the coin, it becomes Kaddish. It's called a truma. The second one for the levy. You can eat it. But here we're gonna take the dish and the affair, the, the 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 ashes, which dusha do they have? And now we're not done with the fire. Asher Toichal Ha Ash. In case you guys didn't understand that the fire had to really consume it, here it says in the lotion of consuming, Toichal Ha'esh. What? As ha'oila. Alam is beyach. Like it's not enough we were repeated already these times and times over because we're the oila. We didn't bring it on Obama. We didn't expect to burn it on the thing. It says the oila had to be on the misbeyach. And on every time he's going to come back and he's going to say again all these words has to tell us something because it's not shayach. Uh, but the terror repeats words for no reason. And he has to place these ashes next to the Mizbeach. But so that was the true addition. To prelevate, he can only have two clothes. How many clothes the, Koh the Kohanim have? Four. Kohen Hedyot has four clothes. He has the shirt, the pants, the avnet, the belt, and his um, uh, atars and the hat. But when he was doing Truma Sadeshan, he was only allowed to wear three of them. The hat, the shirt, and the pants, but not the avnet. He was not allowed to wear. That's, I think, we're going to see on Shabbos going into this, um, you know, the Indian, how the Koyan 
here we're gonna see the today the Indian of the kapara of the Euler in more in general terms. But Bezos Hashem on Shabbos, um, we'll see more how how things are working. Like how is the Koyen actually bringing the kapara? Why is he not allowed to wear an abnet? Why is he not allowed to wear the belt? What is the belt doing? But once he goes out and take it out, he has to wear the belt. Interesting. So just to resume the question where we're going to focus, we we got we we said a klal, a generality, zois Torah so oila. This is the Torah of the oila. Number one, no, the Torah of the oila was learned in by Yikra. Number two. You come and say those Teresa Euler, but the only mitzvah you're going to teach me is the Truma Sadation. Taking out the, the, the ashes from the Mizbeach, which technically we said it's not part of the Euler. It's not a din part of the Euler. It's a din part of the Mizbeach. So we really have nothing pertaining to the Euler here. I want to understand, and this is where I'm going to focus on one point and one point only, and you will see how deep that point is. What am I achieving? By removing the ashes from the Mizbeach. Am I just cleaning it up? Is it a Pesach cleaning that I have to do? No, the Pesach says you have to remove the burning coals. And go under and go take, pick up the ashes of the oil. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So... There were 2,000 people that came to the Beis Amikdash that day. Some people brought Shlamim, some people brought Chata, some people brought Asham, some people brought Oilos. Okay, fine. Why? Does he have a different color, the ash? It's for me to know which ash I should take from the Oilos, which not from the Chata, so not, we're not from the Asham, and not from the Mincha, and not from the Shlamim. How am I supposed to know? The Tzibui of the Torah is to take the ashes from the oil. He makes no sense no matter the way we look at it. It is impossible. We had 2,000 animals burnt on, on this Mizbeach. How am I supposed to figure out which one is the ashes of the oil? Simple question. You tell me to do a mitzvah, I'm willing to do it. Just tell me how to perform it. I'm incapable of looking at um I'm incapable of looking at the um, the ashes and differentiate between the ash of this carbon or the ash of this core. I know it seems very technical, but don't worry, we're gonna move from this kind of um we're gonna go more into the words, into the concept in order to understand, you know, what's What's in it for us here? Because I love the mitzvah of tremesedation. I love the mitzvah of carbon oil. At the end of the day, at the end of the day, you had only 1,250 years when it, it applied. We are up to 5,000. 784. So you know how I think. I'm always looking through that angle. Why did HaKadosh Baruch Hu, if this is so important to him, if so much depends, so much kapara depends on the carbon, then leave us a Besamikdash. Why did they have the Besamikdash them and not us? How do you expect us to be tar? How do you expect us to be Kaddish? We don't have the base Amikdash. With HaKadosh Baruch who create, 
his creation, in, meaning including all the worlds, unless everything is level, HaKadosh Baruch Hu is Kel Emunah Ve'en Avel. Is the Tzadik Ve'yashar Hu. It's not possible that one generation has an advantage more than another generation. So once we're going to understand the godless of this mitzvah, we're going to feel we, we lost. Unless we find something else that's exactly applying to it. And we could understand through that why they were bringing a carbon and not us. All right, let's get going into the... Um, the Zoya, I mean, not only in Pasha's Tav, not only in Pasha's Vayikra, in Pasha's Pikude, Pasha's Pinchas, all over. There is a fundamental cloud here. That the Kohen, no matter if you look in, 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 in Tazria, Metzoira, wherever you see the Tuma and the Korban, there's a Zoya. They're telling you that the Sitra Achara, all the Chitzoinim, all the Klippas, you know, cannot against the Kohen. Otherwise, how can a Kohen be Metzoira, Metzoira? How can a Kohen be Metzoira, the Nida? How can the Kohen be metair, the, the, the someone who touched the dead person? And so forth and so forth. So we see that the Kohen of the Tumor cannot against the Kohen. The Kohen has a special strength that this strength enables him to bring Kapara to the person who brought the, cor the Korban. And we have to understand what is the soid, what is the secret? How does he work? Okay, the guy is a Kohen. I mean, he has two feet, two legs, one head, looks exactly like a, ben, a, a Israel and like a Levi. So where is his strength? His strength is in the avoida itself that he does. His strength is basically in compensation with the fire of the Mizbeach. His strength is no in his clothes. It's not him, the strong guy. It's the clothes that, that he's wearing that together they have a, a, a special strength. Very important to understand because I want to understand about myself once we reveal what's the, the, the compensation that we have today to do the same type of mitzvahs and how to reach the same level, then I want to know, how can we gain kapara? Because I have no koyen and he doesn't have those clothes with him. So how can we achieve that? So the Zoya says here, actually it's in Parshas Pikude, explains that, um, like the Gemara says in Sanhedrin, Nun Vavamun Beis, that Loshen Tzav, Tzab is always Abedazar. Whenever you see Tzab, you find Abedazar there. From last week's year, we understand what it means. It means that someone had battles. And battles are associated with Abedazar. Because the way to serve Abedazar is through thoughts only. To decipher that, a person is made of four components. A body that we have said is made out of the legs of the Nachash. The flesh. The flesh of the body was done, was created with the flesh of the Nachash. That's why there's no create, create a, a creature in this world, in Olam Asiya, that doesn't share part of the DNA of the serpent. The super DNA in this world is the DNA of the serpent. And everybody has a share, depending on, depending on the animals, depending on the thing, it's a little bit more or a little bit less, but it doesn't matter. But 
we share some some, some traces of the DNA of the Nachash. Why? Because the body is here involved. The mission of the Kohen, since, okay, so I'm going to say there was four, four, four components because we, we have to go on these components. You have the nefesh. The nefesh has two sides. On one side, it's connected to the body, I mean, the, the lower end that pulls down all the time. And on the upper side, it's connected to the ruach that always try to elevate itself. Unless the nefesh pulls him down and um, and make it behave exactly like the goof. And this is where the makshava comes in. When a person has a forbidden thought, that thought affects the ruach of the person. The neshama can go away, can go back. So the person remains without the neshama, but he cannot live without ruach. If you don't breathe, you're not alive. So you cannot live without Ruach. And therefore, the maximum he can affect in his body is the Ruach. Because the Neshama is affected, but not affected in terms of taken down. It is left. So the Kohen goes to the source of the problem and burns the Machshava. The Oila represents the Machshava and when it's the smoke goes back up, whatever fell down, it's starting to go back up. I know it's generalities. We we will explain exactly. Right now, I'm going through the path, and I'm going to go and focus till it's going to be one little point in your hand, and you're going to know the whole thing. And when you're going to look upside down from the bottom up, you want to say, ah, now that I have this, it's under, everything is understandable. So, and therefore says the Zerah Kodesh, that's why the, the Mizbeach was not burning fast, the, the, the Oila, because like, you didn't have a knob on the Mizbeach, but the Mizbeach knew which Corbin was coming, uh, was, was laid on, on it. When it was a chatas, one second it would be burnt, turn into ashes. Shlamim, quickly. Asham, quickly. Mincha, depending which mincha. But the oila, it would take a whole night to, to, to be consumed. And still in the morning, they will be part of the animal that were not burnt. Purposely. Why? Because the night is the time of the dini. Is the time when the sitra achra is powerful. And we need, so if there would be nothing of the oil at night, then we all going to have to prove everything I'm saying, because it's not written that part. It's just through the words of the Zoya. We understand that. So we have no protection for that person at night. So they can come back and take back what was taken from them during the day through the oil. And therefore to prevent, because this person still is not completed. It's not because the oil was burnt on the Mizbeach that he was corrected, he was healed. He's not healed. He's a sick man. You ha we have to go through a night, the moment, the, 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 the time when the, the clippers are, are are prevailing, this is a time when they're stronger and show them that they cannot come back here anymore and through somehow some magical thing the the removal of the ashes will basically heal totally the person and uh, atone him for, 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 for his head and so forth. But So we have to understand you know, how this works. So there is a question. And it says, that's why it says, 
Vesbana, to tell you that the Sitra Akhra was given into the hands of the Kohen. If you look in Parashas Pinchas, well, we read every Rosh Chodesh, the decree of every Rosh Chodesh. Tzav, by the Hashem, Tzav is B'nei Yisrael. But it says also Tzav, which is a machshava, now we know through the Gemara and through the Zoya that it refers to a thought of Abayda Zara as B'nei Yisrael. So you have to explain the same way you explain Tzav is Aaron, that the Sitra Akra is given into the hands of Aaron. You have to explain the same way that they're given into also B'nei Yisrael can overpower them. And indeed, the Zayar there says it, goes, goes on it and says, as we explain there, we have to explain it. here. The only difference is B'nei Yisrael do it through the Torah. Very interesting. Very, very interesting. Do you know Koyen, that's not Mekayim, the Torah that can do Avoida? No. Same thing with Ben Israel. But the Koyen has a special strength, which is to be able to atone and remove the forces, the evil forces from the person. The forces of Choyshech, of obscurity from the person. Remove them totally. In that case, how do B'nai Yisrael have the same strength? The Kohen has the Mizbeach. The Mizbeach by itself, Al HaMizbeach. So we see already being on the Mizbeach create, create an atonement. We have Eish, the fire. We have the Ashan. So it's not the Kohen alone. We have the smoke going up. And then we have the Deshen, which, which are the ashes. So it's a big avoida, very big avoida. In simple, how can you say it's Sabbath Ben Israel? Or you need to change your pshat, your explanation about Sabbath Sahara. I want to go into I want to go into, let's go into um Explaining you, we did it already. Uh, I don't remember which parsha. We always say that word sitra achra. We always say that this word dini. What does it mean? You have some to have something concrete in order to understand, to to be able to to have a handle. On 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 um, on these concepts, they can remain concepts. Otherwise, we'll never understand how an engine works. So, how the Sitra Akhara works is like this: you have the two snakes, the sun and the lily, the husband and the female. Whenever someone falls in their hands. They're sending the crews in order to, uh, to punish the sinner, but not because they want to correct him. It's because they want to take more of his kedusha away. So there are four head of the clip is called Avain, Mashchis, and each one, there's a lot of learning about it. Af, Kema. Let me put the voils here so people understand. Avain, we have much. Please, what do you mean? Much, please. We have Af and Chema. There's nothing bad that can happen without having one or more of these guys. Depending on how bad it is, then 
already when you go up, it goes up this way. When you go up to the mashkis, that's why we say at night, Behu rachum yechaper avoin, velo yashkis, vehiba le ashiv apoi, af, velo yayer kol chamasoi, chema chamasoi. So here are the four clippers. This equals to a number. 1028. In Yom Kippur, we say, we say, Rachum Chanun, um, uh, Rachum Chanun, um, I forgot the last one, I think. Whatever, seven names of Hashem, seven uh, attributes of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And really, we say that because this is a shame that Yaakov Avinu gave to his children it's a tremendous powerful shame it's this I can't say the I cannot say that name so and whoever thinks about at any time this name no matter what thoughts he has he burns the thought in other words exactly like the oil law he burns the thought why did do I show you this? Because the Sitra Akhara has a counter power in the Gdusha. And in the Gdusha, if someone I, I, I can find them uh, again in Mamachza, you know, the the seven uh, six attributes, one, two, three, four, five, six. The six attributes we 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 men, we say on Yom Kippur because we hint that name in order for the Satan not to come through. Out Phyllis, it's in it's in Musa for the keeper, um, and and give us bad thoughts. And this already, but this is not where I'm going. This already burns everything. But there's a midrash Rabasi. He says. And that's going to put us on the way. There are two words. First word of the Yechud is Shema. And the last word is Echa. He says, take these two letters. And this first and the second one here. Uh, I'm going to just put them into color so you understand because now we're going to go we change color here. I'm going to go here. here. And here. Interestingly, we mention in the Yehud these clippers. Mem for Mashkis. Ayin for Avayin. Aleph for Af. Sorry. You see how many mistakes? Up. The four. There, so I made a mistake. It to me, had a mistake. And this is also the name of the four carbonates. We have the Oila, we have the Mincha, we have the Asham, we have the Chat. All are within, and we have left 304. The, the last two letters. When the person, when the person is doing, he has the right kavana because we saw the kavana last week. It touches the keser, so the kavana is a yud. So now you have your kavanas shin dalit yud. You have the shaka, and the shaka is always on the outside, like in the mezuzah, protecting from the outside. So the shin dalit is given. It's the person. 
when he's born, he is Shin Dalet. And Yud is the Machshava when he goes and regrets what he has done and he wants to have the right Machshava. At that point, he's creating a Shakai and he beats those, those four um, clippers. And it's considered for him like he has done a Mincha, a Oila, an Asham, and a Chat. That's the only thing it says here. However, we have to figure out, I understand it's very nice to see this, it's very nice to say a nice gematria or a nice sort of thing. I'd like to understand technically how this works. How, how is it possible a person made a mistake? He had a bad thought. He created a pagan. In the Chachma, in the Yud. Yud is composed by two parts. We're going to learn this as we go in the Oitzvah's Chaim. The, the, the Yud is composed of the body of the letter, the, the letter Yud, and the Little, little little step on top, which is even more important than the whole the body of the letter. Why? Because the body of a letter is explicit, is visible. However, the the the, the little tag is hidden. It's like the Kesser alien that we know nothing about. So how do we remove that? The Maiser Rokeach of the Rebbeon Mibels, Zechat Tzadi B'Kadosh Libracha, who was a Saraf, tremendous Saraf. He brings the Gemara in Me'ila that says that someone who uses the Efer of the, the Mizbeach is Moya. It's Me'ila. I don't know how to say Me'ila in English, sorry. It transgresses the Gdusha of the Mizbeach. That's the correct way to say it. And he, and he explains him because its mitzvah was done of burning the oil, therefore the remainder is Kaddish. Yeah, but I'm scratching my head here. I just don't understand. We thought that according to the Zoya and that how we understood that the oil is being burned, it turns into ashes. Those ashes are basically the, 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 the result of the burnt thought, not of Kedusha. What is the Euler? The Euler is, the word Euler means going up. What is going up? This person lost his Nefesh Ruach Neshama. Of Kedusha, he had a Nefesh Ruach Neshama given to him from the Shechina because of a thought, he's getting a Nefesh Ruach Neshama from the other side, from the dark side. How do you work this that it's going to be replaced? And that's the question we started this year with. How is he working that by, by picking up ashes, I'm transforming that person from being a complete, I want to say, chasichra de isura, a piece of isur, a part of the sitra achra, to become all of a sudden the part of the Gdusha. That, that, in resume, that, that's really our question. How does it work? Because they give us all kind of clawing. But on the Maise Reikeach, on, on, on the Belzer Rebbe Datsal, that's very hard because he wanted to explain, according to the Gemara in Me'ila, that there's a Gdusha on the Efer. This is the Gdusha on these ashes. I would have thought the Gdusha comes exactly like every other Gdusha on um, 
of a truma is because when the person does a maise and you put it aside for Hashem, for the Kayan, because automatically there's a level, it's a precious, it's put aside exactly how do we call marrying a woman? Kiddushin. From Lashon Kedusha. Look at the thesis read in um, Kiddushin Beis Amud Beis. First thesis read on top of the page. Why is he called Kiddushin? Which Kiddusha there is in here? The fact that he reserved her only for him. When something is taken out of the general and made it private, automatically a Kedusha comes on it. I understand that. However, I would like to know you know, how this happens. We've been burning your carbon. Okay, the carbon is a kapara. What was so hard to say? No, but there's so many particulars. He has to be with these clothes. He has to be burnt on a misbeach for a certain time. He has to be taken at the afer. And if the afer also on the other side, it's not understandable to say that the afer is the sitra achra. Why? Because the afer was supposed to be taken into a mockham into a place as the Pasuk says here and he will take out the, the, the ashes outside the encampment you can't throw it into a place uh, that's Tame you can only throw it in a place that is Tahir but if the main the, the Sitra Akhra is there. What would you put it into the Tyra? You should not. You should just dismiss it into anywhere, anywhere you want, in a bathroom if you need to be. And how can a Gdusha come onto it? It's impossible. The, the Gdusha cannot lay on, on top of, of the tumor. It's impossible. I would like to be, I know it's going to be, uh, but you understand, these are halachis, these are not the halachis of Shabbos, halach of tefillah, these are hilches migdash, the halachis of the Beis migdash. so you, you're less familiar with them, and, and it's normal. But we have to get naughty here to understand because this is going to explain us a lot of things. I promise you that when, when, when I'm going to explain how it pertains to us, I'm going back to the normal world. So gi gi give me a few um, minutes here to, 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 to explain you this uh, with a little bit of depth. I'm gonna go slow so we have uh, we have a good understanding. So let's put these two together. We already done them. Okay. We know that the 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 begadim of the of the Koyan is big doy bad. Look at the midrash pishta. It's made out of linen. Who brought a carbon of linen was kind. So here we already going to go into the hijibiji of, of Pishta. But I am not going to discuss this tonight. I'm going to discuss this. You know what? Why don't I give you something on it at least? Why do we bury a person after he passes away with exclusively cloth made out of linen? Nothing else. Nothing else. You're not allowed to put anything else in this cloth. Because linen is like a wall. Anywhere, anyone that wears linen cannot be attacked 
by any power in the world, including the power of magic. It's very, very strong, Lena. It prevents. So when a person passes away, and now he's going to go, in order to go up, he's going to have to go through the world of the Klippa, and he may not be have been perfect, so we don't want him to be stopped. That's why he wears linen, so they can approach linen. Like linen is like the anti citra Ahra. Put it that way. That's why Paro was wearing linen. And when Yosef came before him, and he, and he was also wearing linen, he knew that, that Yosef, because all the, 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 the magicians of Paro didn't know the secret of linen. But he understood since he had all linen, Yosef came all dressed in white. He, he knew the, 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 the secret of linen. Paro understood that. And that's why he gave him the, the necklace of gold to wear because this necklace was canceling the power of Pishta. Because it's Zahav, it's gold. Gold comes from the north. So he wanted to bring on top of his claw the other side. But Yosef Atzadik says the Chesel Avram, Rabbi Avram Azulai, that when Yosef Atzadik went home, he took away right away the um, this necklace. Anyway, so we see there is a power. So we are getting, we're gonna, we are more and more confused because the oiler went on the Mizbeach. The, the Pasuk insists that he goes on the Mizbeach, but you see that the Pishtan had the way to push away, you know, uh, a manner, a fashion to push away the the these clippers from the person. So there is something. Let's go into the words here. If I just take Pishta, uh, Pishtan equals A3. Equals Dusha times 2. Twice Dusha. What is he going to tell me? What does he tell me? We'll see in a second. That's what he does. But now, if I really want to know the side of Pishtan, what do I have to do? If I want to know what secret lies in there, I always have to open. So we have Pei, Shin, Tav, Tav here, and Nun, which equals to 963, which equals to Echad in full, Aleph, Face. Yes, Dalit. Exactly, 963. Meaning that the Pishtan has the power to unify. It's not that the Pishtan is a hijibiji stuff. It's a unifier. Whenever there's unity, there's Kedusha. Wherever there is Pirud, there is Tuma. Tuma cannot lie into a place when there's unity. And therefore, if you take the word Torah in full, like this, Tav, Vav, Reish, A, equals 963. In other words, the Pishtan has a unifying power exactly as much as the unifying power of the Torah. 
Amazing. That's what he tells you. Now you understand why HaKadosh Baruch Hu wanted to have a unifier here and not anything else. Why? Because he didn't want to dilute the power of these people learning. What? You know. Sorry, I was lost here. I said... The Pishten has the same power as the Torah, meaning that because of the Achdus it's, it's creating and the Torah through learning, so it's 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 two ways to go up the mountain and, and just different roads, but it reaches exactly the same point. And this is amazing that just wearing something can remove. Now you understand also why the, the, the mace, someone who passed away, has to wear because it unifies everything. And whenever there's unification, the Sitra Akhra hates it, cannot approach. Now the Torah is compared to fire. Now we see that before the way we presented the puzzle, it seemed that everything was a broken, uh, independent component of the the the. And each one was individually working and enabling the atonement. Now we see that it's not true because here, when the Torah says, there always has to be a burning fire on the Mizbeach. Which fire? The, 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 the fire of the Mizbeach? Yes, the fire of the Mizbeach is Kaddish. The power to unify. The power to unify is Kaddish. More than anything. Put this into perspective. In the time of David HaMelech, all the Bnei Israel were tzaddik. Though, when they were going to fight the enemies, some of the soldiers died. On the other side of the spectrum, at the time of Achav, the king Achav, they were Oyvid Abed However, when they were going to war, none was dying. They never had a loss. Why? Because of Achdus. Achdus works independently from anything else. When Bnei Israel are unified, Knesset Israel up there is unified and automatically give them victory. And there's no room for Kitru. When we unify together, yes, we have differences. You have differences with your children, you have differences with your wife, you have differences with your parents. Two human beings are never created in the same mold. There's a unique mission for every, for every Jew. So it's not Shaykh at the same time to be exactly in the same mold. No, it's a mission which is not far away, usually not too far away from the mission of the parents. So that's how you have, and the children also follow that, that, that path. But sometimes you do have one of the children who has a mission which is completely on the other side of the spectrum. And automatically you see differences you know, they don't see eye to eye in this family. There they, they seem to be some, this, we call them dysfunctional. There's nothing dysfunctional. HaKadosh Baruch Hu created his world and gave that boy or that girl a special mission. And when we get off trying to remove people that HaKadosh Baruch Hu molded, we'll understand that we have to accept them that way. And it's not because they are wrong. Because they have a different mission. That's like now, because me, I'm on my mission and I was made through a certain mold, I cannot go judge someone else and his value based upon my mold. No, my mold is gonna be used, has been used only once, and it will be used only once. Every person is unique to Akadosh Baruch Hu. He's a unique soldier, and that's why he has to do um. He has to do his um, his work. 
the ash that we're talking about here is, is the ash. Who is the Mizbeach? It's the Bnei Israel. It's Israel. And I'll explain everything. The 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 in Israel you have the 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 word esh. When the the yes there there was a mizbeach and there was a fire burning on it all time, but we said the mizbeach was only there for twelve the uh, twelve hundred and fifty years. Now I don't have a mizbeach. I need that zgula because the Gemara says. There are three chatoim that a person cannot prevent himself from doing every day. One of them is having bad thoughts. One of them is Lashon Hara. Everybody feels this uh, every day. So just for almost to tell us, to prevent us from being Balgaiva, who are we? We are nothing. We can't even stop our thoughts. We can't even control our mouth. Every day the Gemara says it happens. And people want to feel the tzaddikim. Well, I'm glad at least in one of the worlds they feel the tzaddikim. Because it just shows that on the other world, it's going to be right the opposite. When a person feels, Chazal say, what HaKadosh Baruch Hu wants from a person that he feels that he is only half-half and the whole world depends on him. Whatever action is going to undertake uh, at that point. So, if I go just to give you, not to anchor you a little bit more in the pasuk and start getting on our way up, like this, we stay in the shot of the pasuk very clearly. We questioned this. Now that we understand the 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 the, the pishtan, the achdus, the shma, the the the, the klipos that are coming on a person when he does something, so we can now understand how the oila is working. This equals two thirty two. You should know by now two thirty two is what we call as the ralab, which is. Ab Sag Ma Ben. Nachem, open your microphone and just uh, tell me you know what it is. Oh, I thought he was here. Jeff, do you know what it is? Can you explain it? I don't know. Am I giving shit? Sure? Yeah, Jeff, you're here. Yeah, unmute, uh, please, uh, Jeff. Just tell me what Absagma Ben is. We've been learning it. Um... So it's all the youth cave off cake. No, it seems nobody hears me. Uh, yeah. Do you remember what the ab, the sag, the ma, and the ben? You yeah. have it on your page there that I give you guys all the time. Oh, it's here. I'm going to do it. Uh, why should I even write? Here it is. We're going to, it's going to affect all the world. I see ya. Uh, this is Yud Ke Vav Ke. Yud with the hey written hey hey, the Vav 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 hey hey. We go to Oila Mayetzira. It's still, look at the orange color, Yud Ke Vav Ke. But inside is going to change. The Yud never change. It's only the Hays that will change. And between the two, uh, the top is the Vav. So these are the four ways. So each shame is. Its name of Hashem, like written like this, controls one of the worlds. And if you add them all together, equals 232. 
Now you understand what the Torah here, why is the Torah added a word? Here, Euler, tell you, look inside here because I'm going to tell you what's happening. When a person comes back to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, HaKadosh Baruch Hu sent his names to him and say, now they're going to protect you until your atonement, until you have kapara, until you have everything. And we're going to be mechaper on everything you have done. And, 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 and we're going to explain this. So the Eish is in the Bnei Yisro. Now, Bnei Yisro, there's we spoke about it. There's three letters left. Resh, Lamed, Yud in Israel. Eish is two letters. Israel is five letters. Eish and Resh, Lamed, Yud. Resh, Lamed, Yud equals to 40 Amalek. We have the two extreme in us. The light and the darkness. Actually, if you take the word Ur er and Choshech equals 541. Exactly like Bnei Yisrael. Whether you take Esh and Amalek or Oyer and Choshech, it's exactly the same thing. This shows that Bnei Yisrael, they're either the builders or the destructors. Bnei Yisrael are not in the middle, the extreme. They're either builders, like it says in Eshaya, he was misnabi to the Bnei Yisrael, you builders and you destructors will come out of you. They'll be Jews. Just like last war, world war. You know, don't think the Jews were not. Uh... So. And then we said, what is the Lashon al Moigda? So now we know we have the four world. We have the four worlds that stand to be corrected with the name of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, But it's not done. And how it's done, you know, the Pasuk is really telling us the naughty details here, how it's done. This equals 255. Because really, there's no translation to this. He should have said Moigda. Like Tukad, which comes from prior, Lehokid, he, he, he should have never said Al in the first place. He came to teach us something. This equals Naha. So we explained last week that the Naha is the Yesoid coming God of the Bina, the Aden, and the Hashko is a Gan, the Gan is the Malchus. You have exactly the same thing on the upper spheres. Nahar is the Chachma, Aden is the Bina, Yud K, together with the last He. They bring the daughter like on Shabbos, like the, 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 the symbol of Oy Hell, when the Shechina goes between the Chokhmah and the Bina, we call this the Oyhel, like the Oyhel Moyed. It's Chokhmah, Bina, and in the middle, there's a mouth. Now, when a person sinned because he had a bad thought, he affected the Ruach. So, how did he affect the Ruach? The Ruach is his upper level that goes all the way to the Chokhmah. And uh, since... I don't know. I see almost nothing on my computer anymore. Things happen here. I have no clue. You can see me. That's the main thing. Um, so the Chochma will go with the Shepa because the first Yudke Vavke, the one with the Yud in Atsilus, comes out of the Chochma. And he's going to go. And where did where is the Machshava of a person? In the Chochma, in the Moyach. 
So you go in the Moyach, and then you have automatically the Chokhmah working for you up there to atone you. We said, Al Moigda, Al Amizbeach. We don't understand. We already said here, the Eish Amizbeach to Kadboy, and we're going to go on and on again. Al Amizbeach. If you take these two, equals 417. Yoim Hakipuri. In other words, when I saw that, I knew the Pasuk is revealing me here. If I can find the way, the right path, the Pasuk is revealing me here, the way of the Kapar. So for this, I remember the shear we gave last year in... Uh, Pashas by Yakel with the Shulchan. Just to go a very small point, we brought the Peleyoets. The Peleyoets say that the Shoresh of all the sins of a person happen from his table. Why? Because La Pesa Chatas Roivets, when a person is born at the exit of the womb, the Yetzirah waits for him to jump on him. When you go put your feet under your table, you become that baby again. You're gonna sustain, you're gonna try to, you're gonna feed yourself, you're gonna whine, you want this, and I cook like this, and I, you are back to who you were when you were born. Says the Peleyoets, says the the the, the, the Zera Kodesh. On, when you sit on your table, look at the head of the table. The two snakes are right there. If you don't say the if you don't do tzedak on your table, everything is there. If you do chad v'shalm litzanus on the table, if you talk dvarim betelim and, 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 you know, improper stuff on the table, person is doomed. The, remember, the table is the panos of a person. However, says the Peleyoetz, he brings in Beshem the Rived, and you find it also in, in Rabbi Nuyoyna, you say that Shuba, I think it's Perakut base. I don't remember off my head. Once you see what a person can achieve on the table, he likes the food. Instead of stuffing himself like a like a famished dog or hyena, you know, he sees a good meat and whatever it takes a little portion. And in his head, Hashem, I really love that meat. As if it was up to me, I would have eaten more. However, I know I have seen, I have, and I owe you fast and all kind of thing to do tikkunim. And the person says, let it be my ticket. This is the biggest carbon that goes up to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Shulchan doimele mizbeach. The shulchan of a person is the mizbeach. The carbon oila is him. Adam kiyakriv mikem is one of you. It's not Adam mikem kiyakriv, one of you who will bring your carbon. No, it's Adam. Yakriv, me came. Who's the Corbin? Is me. But you know what? Says the Rive, that's a very easy the, the Peleyot, it's a very easy way out. Why having to go through fast and slichas and tikunim and all this? Do not fress. Do not be a behemoth on the table. Be an Adam on the table. You have achieved a lot more than you think. You have achieved the Avoida. Now you understand the Torah for 1250 years wanted the Mishkan to teach us these values. However, for us to carry it out, 
many times a day, however time, how many times you sit on your table, you have to know that at that point, you are before the Mizbeach, before HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Ze ha-shulchan asher lifnei Hashem. Exactly as he says on the Korban, lifnei Hashem. Because your shulchan is your Mizbeach. Your Korban oila is you. Your Korban chatas is in your plate. What you, So you don't feel yourself so automatically you, the, you, you, there, there is no shlita on from from the 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 the, the satan on you, and now comes your pishtan, which is the gedusha. Automatically, the ruach. That's why it says reyach nichoyach ishel Hashem. Reyach equals to eighteen. You this. When you're able to do this with the right kavana, it's already, you already did a tikkun till olam beria because two eighteen equals beria. So, oh, I want to go to Atsilus. Don't worry, my friend. Atsilus, there's no um, mundane or anything else that can go up besides your thoughts. You finish the work with your thoughts. You don't need anything else. Not what's in your plate. Not what in your thing. What finishes your tikkun is what thoughts do I have when I leave, you know, a behema ra, your chai ra, someone who goes like the goim and have this huge 32 ounce steak. Yeah, I can eat it. You don't realize this is the machshava of the satan. This is a das yevanim to do such a thing. You want to be proper. And even if you can eat it, Use this opportunity to make a korban oila, korban chatas, korban mincha, korban asha. What is it all together? You're removing avain, mashchis, af, chema, which the Zoya says you have four malachim on the right of a person, Uriel, Argamon. Ariel, Raphael, Michael, and Gabriel. And the last one is Nuriel, which is Uriel in a different situation. So it is only four. On the left side of the person, there are four clippers. Avain, Mashchis, Af, Chema. You decide. Re'ei nosati lefanechal. See, I gave before you. Esachayim, on the right side, you have life. On the left side, you have death. As Haberacha, on your right side, you have life. Ves Hamaves, on your left side, you have death. And Hashem says, please choose, my son, please choose life. The Kobin Oilo comes to teach us what we learned on the Shulchan. From Behema, we were a Behema when we sing. It doesn't mean we have to remain a Behema. So once you're on a Shulchan, what do we do on the legs when the Kavanas of the Shulchan? Behema to Adam on every leg around the table. So we surrounded also by protection, by Kedusha, and we can remove these four clippers, says the Zaya, the, the Afer, it burns the clipper. What? It's the attachment of the clipper to the person. This, it burns it totally. It disappears. And only the Gdusha comes. And that's what we have to learn from this Pasha this week to remain conscious. Every time we're going to take something and put it in our mouth, the Peleyo at Shreidavek, he, he pushed so much, make a proper bracha. Because this is the process of the whole Corbin. Sit like a match. Eat like a match. At that point, you have done the biggest nachas to Amen.